Right now, the ongoing problems with car thefts now spreading into rural Wisconsin. Several cars stolen in just a matter of hours. And why local deputies say they don't plan to refer charges after investigators say a man shot his neighbor's dogs. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. Police in Rock County say they are trying to piece together how five cars were stolen from a rural community in just a matter of hours. Our Adam Duxter spoke to one of the victims and joins us now with what they're saying tonight. Adam? Yeah, well, Eric and Charlotte, while these car thefts in southern Wisconsin are seemingly becoming more and more common, the people in the town of Porter say what happened there earlier this week is anything but. Lewis Hauser admits not much happens near his home in the town of Porter. And aside from the occasional passing car, I would say it's pretty calm. But that calmness changed Thursday morning when he said something of value was taken from him. The dog woke me up, go outside, well then I walked outside, looked over, and it, my truck was gone. Right away I knew it was probably stolen. Lewis knew his truck was equipped with OnStar, which helped police track it down later that morning abandoned. But police soon realized so you got these three thefts. This was something more than just one stolen car. We've never had a shift or any particular time frame like this where we um, had so many vehicles stolen. It's completely unique. First time. Captain Jude Maurer says in the matter of a few hours on Thursday morning, cars were taken from West Bullard Road, North Tuttle Road, West Wheeler Road, North Eagle Road, and Coon Island Road. Five cars stolen in total. I mapped them out of the five of the five thefts, and uh, the you're looking at about four miles as a radius for all the thefts. For us to have four vehicle thefts with an additional attempted vehicle theft is really completely un, unheard of. Maurer says for something like this to happen in a rural area, the thief or thieves would have had to know where they were going and who to target, as each of the stolen cars was unlocked with the keys inside. Hauser says that's because people here trust one another, but knowing what he knows now, that trust is getting harder to come by. There's will be very few people around this area that I'll trust anymore. It's kind of mind blowing and it's upsetting for the, especially for the area. I mean, that's, now everybody's gonna have to be on guard. Maurer says police were able to find one of the other five stolen cars after it wasn't able to make it over a railroad tie on the property, so it was just left there. But police are still looking for three cars, which are a white Nissan Maxima, a black F-150, and a blue Chevy Silverado. We have full descriptions of all three of those vehicles on our website, channel3000.com. But tonight, police are saying if you see any of those three on the road, to give them a call. Adam Duxter, live at our Rock County Bureau tonight at the Janesville Gazette. Adam, thank you. A registered child sex offender is being relocated to Milton next week. Richard Isabel was convicted of first degree sexual assault back in 1988 and first degree sexual assault of a child in 1991. He'll be moving to a home on Town Line Road on Tuesday. The Rock County Sheriff's Department says he will be under strict supervision, including GPS monitoring. Exceptional heat has been observed across the globe in recent weeks. According to the World Meteorological Organization, last month is now in the running to be the hottest month in recorded history. The data shows that July 2019 was on par with and possibly marginally warmer than the previous warmest July in 2016, which was also the warmest month ever. Next week, FEMA and Wisconsin emergency management crews will begin preliminary damage assessments in 18 counties that were hit hard last by last month's severe storms and tornadoes. On Wednesday night, Green Bay had its first confirmed tornado since 2005. Closer to our area, Monroe and Vernon counties are both trying to recover from storm damage. The damage assessments are the first step in potentially requesting a federal disaster declaration to help reimburse communities. Around here, the weekend looking pretty nice. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us with our first alert forecast. Gary? Eric, looks like much of the weekend will be dry with the exception of tomorrow night. And there could be some showers and isolated thunderstorms. No severe weather is expected. You can see showers and thunderstorms in South Dakota and western Minnesota starting to dive more toward the south and east. So we're starting 
starting to get the cloud cover from that, but it'll be a while before we see showers and storms here in southern Wisconsin. It looks like areas west of Madison may see that happen sometime late tomorrow afternoon. High temperatures today were in the upper 70s to around 80 degrees. It did touch 80 in Boscobel, 82 of the high in La Crosse. And current temperatures are in the lower 60s, a few places in the upper 50s to the north. But as clouds move in, those temperatures will be slow to fall from here on out. Dew point temperatures have also climbed into the upper 50s, and that'll be about where overnight low temperatures end up in the upper 50s to around 60. Look for variably cloudy skies tomorrow. Maybe a chance of a shower or thunderstorm in the afternoon west of Madison with a high of 79. That's your news for now. First alert forecast. Gary, thank you. A flight attendant from Wisconsin on a Chicago to South Bend United Express flight has been charged with public intoxication. 49 year old Julianne March of Waukesha will have her initial hearing August 29th. She was charged yesterday after an August 2nd flight when passengers say they became scared for their lives due to her apparent condition. She worked for Air Wisconsin on behalf of United Express, but the company says she is no longer an employee. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says they don't plan to refer charges after investigating why a man shot his neighbor's dogs. As our Amanda Quintana reports, Wisconsin law says the man had the right to. The son opened up the door and said, yeah, uh, we've seen them. We shot them. They're dead right there. Todd and Justin Schlender were in shock when they went to their neighbor's house looking for their puppies, Stella and Gizmo, to find out they were killed. So we asked where our dogs were, and then we went down there. All they did is put them in their burn pile, you know, moved them down to their burn pile. And then, um, yeah, and we were just both astonished. And so we, you know, brought the puppies home and buried them. The two eight-month-old Sharpays, puppies of their other dogs, dug a hole under the fence, getting into the neighbor's yard. And that's where uh, they carved a little hole over there. That's when the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says they attacked the neighbor's goats, injuring them. The neighbor telling investigators he tried to yell at the dogs to get them to leave before he shot them. According to state statute, he has the right to, to protect his own animals on his own property. But the Schlenders believe there were so many other ways this could have been handled. It amazes me that people have the heart to shoot a dog, a, a family pet, at, you know, they're clean, in, they're well fed, they weren't strays. And then to put them in next to a burn pile and not even attempt to, to find the people they belong to. They say the puppies weren't aggressive and were probably just plain, ultimately believing their neighbor just wanted to do harm to an animal. To fire numerous shots into the dog where Gizmo was very um, mutilated. Mutilated. Amanda Quintana reporting. The sheriff's office says animal control is still investigating. We don't know yet if charges will be filed against the dog owners. A Janesville area woman has a message she hopes drivers will take to heart after she, her husband, and little girl were in a car crash. This is Olivia and their seven-month-old Alexandria. Their car was totaled after a driver distracted by his phone blew a stop sign and hit them at State Road 213 and County Road A, according to a Rock County crash report. The baby came out unharmed, but Olivia has several bruises and a broken hand, and Bill, her husband, who you saw earlier, had to be airlifted to UW Hospital and is in recovery. He's hoping to walk again by Christmas. Now, nearly three weeks later, Olivia has written an open note to that driver and hopes everyone on the road will listen. The text message can wait. The Snapchat stories can wait. Nobody really cares what you're listening to on the radio and putting on your Snapchat. Um, there's people's lives at stake. You know, this little girl was in the back seat of that truck. And this person thought that whatever was on their phone was more important. The driver who authorities say caused the crash is due in court later this month for failing to stop and inattentive driving. A family friend set up a GoFundMe page to help the family with medical costs. We have a link to that on our website. The driver who killed the wife and daughter of UW basketball assistant coach Howard Moore had a blood alcohol content more than two and a half times the legal limit. In May, 23-year-old Samantha Winchester of Ann Arbor, Michigan crashed into Moore's vehicle head on. According to the medical examiner reports that were obtained by the Detroit News, Winchester had a blood alcohol content level of 0.207 
Winchester, by the way, also died at the scene. Howard Moore and his son survived. Police are investigating two cases where counterfeit $20 bills were passed at Madison businesses. They were used at a coffee shop and a grocery store, according to a tweet by the Madison Police Department. You can see the word replica on the bottom right hand corner of those bills. Madison Police are reminding business owners to be mindful of fake bills. Madison's police union is calling Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway's comments problematic. And that's following a blog she posted Tuesday about the actions taken by a police officer while responding to a mental health call for a 17 year old African American in June. Video shows the incident under investigation for reports of an officer using excessive force while responding to a mental health call. Rhodes Conway says the officer's actions are not considered best practice in Madison. In response, Madison Professional Police Officers Association wrote a written letter to the mayor. The issue at hand is the commentary and how it impacts officers and their safety. You know, the subject matter of getting out in front of an investigation before it's closed, um, that's, that's problematic. Deputy Mayor Cameron McClay says the blog was not intended to call out this individual officer and does not think the blog will interfere with the investigation. Both Powers and the mayor's office say they will collaborate over expectations for the police force's role in helping the mental health community. State Department of Health Services says doctors in Wisconsin have confirmed new cases of lung disease tied to vaping. Health officials have now confirmed a total of 12 cases and are investigating 13 others. Those new cases include those who vaped marijuana oils, extracts, or concentrates. Patients with confirmed cases range in age from their teens to 30 years old. Still ahead tonight, Gary will rejoin us with a complete look at our weekend forecast. But first, it has become an annual tradition. Democratic presidential hopefuls descend on Iowa's state fair. Stay with us.
The public comment period on the proposal to bring F-35 fighter jets to Truax Field in Madison is open now. Last week, an Air Force environmental impact statement says there could be a significant increase in noise on Madison's north side if the F-35s come to Madison. On September 12th, the 115th fighter wing is holding an open house at the Alliant Energy Center. Democratic presidential hopefuls are in Iowa for the annual state fair. It's a decades old political tradition for candidates trying to win over voters in the state. That's the first to weigh in on the party's nominee with the Iowa caucuses. Natalie Brand reports. With the Iowa caucuses less than six months away, candidates are on the ground at the state fair where food. Delicious. And I'm not worried about walking away with an empty stomach. Handshakes and politics are at the top of the menu. We get, you know, all of this that not the other states get, so it, it, we might as well eat it up while we can. White House hopefuls are taking turns at the mic at the fair's political soapbox. I'm running for president to help wake up America to the real problems that got Donald Trump elected. Trying to sell their ideas. If we're gonna be the smartest nation on earth, we need to start with universal pre-K for three and four year olds. And pitching their ideals. Our politics need to become more aligned with where we are as people. Your enemy is not your fellow American. We are in this together. Candidates know the stakes are high here. In contested races since 1972, the winner of the Iowa Democratic caucuses has gone on to secure the party's nomination seven out of nine times. The people will make that decision based on that personal contact. They want to have, you know, that tactile, I've, I've touched your hand, I've you know, I've listened to you three, four, five times before I make my decision. On Friday evening, 20 Democratic candidates spoke at the annual Iowa political fundraising event known as the Wing Ding. There is no such thing as a permanently red state or county or precinct. We are one America. Candidates will be spending the weekend crisscrossing this critical caucus state. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Des Moines, Iowa. Now, nearly all of the Democratic candidates are in Iowa, but former Representative Beto O'Rourke canceled his plans to come there so that he could stay in his hometown of El Paso after last weekend's mass shooting. A U.S. Border Patrol boat patrolling the Rio Grande was shot at early this morning from the riverbank on the Mexican side. Customs and Border Protection says more than 50 rounds were fired and the boat was hit several times, but no one on board was injured. The incident is under investigation. The campfire in California last fall has claimed another life, nine months after it happened. The Butte County Sheriff's Office reports a 72-year-old man from the city of Paradise died from wounds this week. That man had been hospitalized since the campfire November of 2018. His death raises the number of people killed in the deadliest fire in California to 86. The father of Michael Brown, who was killed in Ferguson, Missouri, five years ago today, has asked for the case to be reopened. What I am here today in front of you all and the world to demand someone to look at the case. His son, who was not armed at the time, was shot by Officer Darren Wilson. A grand jury decided not to indict him. Wilson was also not charged by the U.S. Department of Justice under then-President Barack Obama. He resigned from the force in November 2014. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now with a look at our weekend forecast. Had another nice day today, lots mm -hmm. of sunshine. Tomorrow we'll see a little more in the way of cloudiness, so maybe see some rain chances, but the better chances should hold off until tomorrow night. Time lapse in the WISC sky cam. Clear skies for much of the day, just a few clouds popping up in the afternoon, and then the cirrus clouds started to move in from the west and thicken up as we started to head towards sunset, and skies will become mostly cloudy. That'll keep temperatures up a bit tonight compared to yesterday when we saw temperatures in the middle 50s. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam downtown Madison, showing partly cloudy skies. Low this morning did drop to 54 degrees. Our high temperature made it back up to 78, and right now we're at 62 degrees with partly cloudy skies. The air is calm, but with the dew point temperature a little higher at 58 degrees, that's about where our low temperatures will probably end up. Uh, current temperatures are in the 60s to around 70 through Wisconsin, uh, a few 50s up to the north, but the thicker cloud cover out to the west, keeping temperatures in the 60s to the lower to middle 70s. And you can see those clouds starting to come in from the west. They're actually the remnants of some showers and thunderstorms that moved through South Dakota, but now they're starting to become a little more southeastward bound. So the first batch of precipitation will probably stay to our south and west. We could start to see a shower or thunderstorm chance by later tomorrow afternoon for areas west of Madison and then tomorrow night for just about the entire view 
viewing area. The jet stream has kind of flattened out uh, in a west-east fashion here. The main part of the jet stream just up to the north of us, but eventually that will sag southward a little bit, keeping temperatures pretty close to average. The showers and storms again weakening as they push into drier air across Iowa and Minnesota where high pressure is located just out to the west of us. That will keep a warm front to our south and west on the other side of which temperatures are pretty warm this afternoon, upper 80s to the lower 90s, whereas on our side of the front, upper 70s to the lower 80s. Dew point temperatures also uh, are a little bit higher to the south and west. These are current temperatures. You can see 60s here, but still close to 80 because it's so humid out there. Dew point temperatures are in the upper 60s, to lower 70s from Nebraska into Kansas, but that air becomes much drier across Wisconsin. So again, another thing that kind of works against these showers and thunderstorms as they push eastward. Now by tomorrow afternoon, uh, we could see a couple of those make it into southwestern Wisconsin. Maybe a little better chance tomorrow night as that weather disturbance passes by. And then on Sunday, look for some breaks in the clouds. High temperatures will probably top out around 80 degrees. A better chance of showers and thunderstorms will be with the next weather system. This approaches from the west on Monday and moves through with a pretty good chance of showers and thunderstorms at some point during the day on Monday. Our forecast for tonight calls for skies to become mostly cloudy. Low temperature will drop off to 59 degrees with light and variable winds for tomorrow. Look for a high temperature of 79 degrees. We'll see variably cloudy skies, a chance for a shower or thunderstorm west of Madison in the afternoon. Pretty slight chance at this point. You can see the clouds moving in from the west overnight. Low temperatures, upper 50s. Here come the showers and storms, but again, they weaken as they approach the Mississippi River. But tomorrow night, we'll see a little better chance for showers and storms. Those should move out of here on Sunday morning. Just a, a variably cloudy day with high temperatures right around 80 degrees. Rainfall amounts generally less than a quarter of an inch, but we could see another uh, shot of showers and thunderstorms on Monday that could bring an additional half inch of rain. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, though, you can see after the rain on Monday, look for dry weather Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, most of Friday. And then uh, toward next weekend, temperatures actually may go up a bit into the mid 80s. A little taste of summer there before we cool off after that. Uh, summer is still here. Let's just. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not done with it yet. <laughs> I know we're not, that's nope. for sure. We need a lot more. Thanks, Gary. Sure. All right, no Christian Yelich again tonight, but the Brewers managing without him so far. The highlights from Miller Park next in sports.
Well, still no Christian Yelich, the reigning NL MVP, out for the third straight game after feeling something was not quite right in his back. And earlier tonight, Craig Council said Yelich is making progress, getting better, but not 100% sure he will be able to play this weekend yet. But the team, they're doing okay without him to start tonight, at least. First inning, Ryan Braun perfectly down the left field line. Lorenzo Cain scores, and it's 1-0 Brewers up first. But the Rangers even it out in the fourth, courtesy of Hunter Pence getting a solo shot off of Gio Gonzalez and we've got a tie game in the fifth Texas goes to the bullpen it's not pretty Adrian Sampson walking at Keston Hira not the most exciting run but they'll take it two to one Brewers and then things get interesting in the sixth Shinsu Chu at the plate pitch is a little awry Pence scores and roof net adore he is sprinting towards home plate too but He's out of there, didn't make it in time. Rangers have no challenges, and right now the Brewers just took the lead in the seventh inning. Well, a few things to unpack from the Packers' first preseason game last night. In case you missed it, Green Bay beat Houston 28-26 to with basically everyone that's a starter sitting out because, well, they've earned their spots on this team. The defense was a bright spot, though. Last season, the Packers forced a total of 15 turnovers, and in the first quarter alone last night, they had three. But also keep in mind that they weren't facing a Texans A squad. But for rookies like first round draft pick Rashawn Gary, that was a good way to set the tone for the defense and what standards they expect to meet. Going through this whole thing, um, you know, as a defense, we want to keep the ball. And um, turnovers are big for us. So, you know, that's something that we just got to keep working on and keep striving for and always focus on the ball, how we've been doing. You know, every play that we out there, we want to make sure it's perfect. But if it's not, you know, move on to the next play and just try to make that one perfect. And I feel like everybody had that mindset. So we don't let, you know, one another get down on each other. It's next play, let's keep moving. And some good news for the Badgers today, especially Xander Neville. The NCAA granting him a sixth year of eligibility so he can play football yet again. The tight end play only played in three games last season because of a right leg injury. And then he tore his ACL in his right knee in practice in October. And then the season before that, in 2017, he tore his ACL in his left knee. So needless to say, staying healthy will be an absolute must, especially because the Badgers are in need of some veteran experience at tight end this year. Finally tonight, 50 Cent, you got some competition for the worst first pitch ever. Before the Rockies-Padres game last night, Bill Walsh and he did get a do-over, though. It was a lot better. I suppose that's what you get when you're an NBA Hall of Famer. And he's also a multi-talented guy. It was grateful dead night at Petco. And Walton was on stage playing the bongos earlier for Electric Waistband, a Grateful Dead tribute band, during their pregame concert. We'll be right back.
Finally tonight, a happy birthday is in order. It is Smokey Bear's 75th birthday. The Forest Service and the Ad Council created the Smokey Bear Wildlife Prevention Campaign in 1944. Smokey is the face of the longest running PSA campaign in U.S. history. Of course, they made a change to that a few years ago. See, now it says you can only, only you can prevent wildfires. Mm -hmm. Remember, it used to be forest, forest fires. fires that, yeah. So, yeah. Jerry's always got some great, great little factoids for us. I used to watch the Smokey Bear cartoon too <laughs> back in the 70s, but that's another story. You got a good forecast for us too. Yeah, for looking not bad for the weekend. Uh, you can see rain out to the west of us, but moving more southeasterly now and just kind of fizzling out. So it'll be dry for the rest of tonight and much, if not most of the day tomorrow. Temperatures right now, lower 60s, dew point temperatures in the upper 50s. So temperatures will only fall a few more degrees. Look for high temperatures around 80 the next couple of days. Maybe a shower or thunderstorm chance, mainly tomorrow night. Better chance Monday and then warmer toward the end of next week. Thanks for joining us. Do something good and have a great weekend.